We watched the episode in wonder, watching as the host, masquerading as a researcher, demonstrated how his participants could be persuaded to believe that a rubber arm was a part of them, while disassociating from their own arm. He placed a divider on the table in front of the person's left shoulder, and the participant placed his or her left arm behind the divider, out of their sight. A rubber arm would then be placed on the other side of the divider, in view of the person. An opaque plastic sheet was then draped over the person's shoulder and the divider, further obscuring the view of the participant of his or her own arm, and only revealing to them the rubber arm protruding from beneath. The host then proceeded to perform a whole host of acts designed to trick the participant's mind into believing that they could feel through the rubber arm. At one point, he used a feather to tickle and touch both the fake and real arms in the same spots at the same time to sync the participant's sensations with the sight of the feather touching the rubber arm. At another point, he lightly snapped a rubber band on both the rubber arm and the real arm on the same spots. This continued and soon, the participants were feeling everything that he did only to the rubber arm. They only seemed to no longer feel the sensations of what the host did to their actual arm, including sticking a delicate needle into the arm. We were intrigued. It was an experiment we had to try. We immediately set about purchasing a lifelike rubber arm and a divider. The items were delivered by the weekend. We were psyched, and at the first opportunity, we proceeded to set the experiments up. It worked pretty well for my partner, and he was deeply amused and awed at the same time. It worked exceptionally well for me. During the experiments, I truly started to believe and think of the rubber arm as my own and I felt every bit of sensation in the rubber arm, even the soft touch of the cool air from the air conditioning. I also failed to even notice that my partner had snapped a rubber band on my real arm during the whole process. It was incredible, and we were really impressed. We kept at it for a couple of hours before we got tired and put it aside on the living room table. We went to bed, still chatting about what we just experienced. I woke up in the middle of the night, unsure of what stirred me. In a sleepy fog, unwilling to move from my comfortable cocoon beneath the comforter, I let out a soft groan. Rubbing the sleep from my eyes, I turned to my left to check if my partner was asleep. My heart stopped for a beat when I caught sight of my left arm lying limply next to me. The arm that was rubbing my left eye abruptly stopped and flopped onto the bed. I stared at it, unmoving, the icy realization dawning on me. It was the rubber arm from before. My own left arm started moving to my will again, and I used both arms to rudely shake my partner awake. In hushed tones, I shared with him what had happened, afraid to look down at the arm. The sleepy demeanor he had evaporated in an instant, and we both quickly left the bed backing away and staring at the rubber arm in fear. We spent the next hour discussing it in the living room and came to the conclusion that I must have had a nightmare. We couldn't explain how the rubber arm got there, but in our desperation to find some normalcy in the situation, we concluded that I must have sleepwalked, or perhaps we left it in the bed without remembering. We were really tired when we went to bed after all. To ease our minds, my partner took the rubber arm and threw it down the rubber chute. Slightly more at ease, we went back to bed. The night passed without any issues, for which I felt immensely relieved. However, when we were headed out to our usual workspace, we opened the door to see the rubber arm at our doorstep. I felt a flood of dread and horror. Closing the front door silently, we looked at each other, terrified, Grasping desperately at any sense of sanity and reason, we somehow eventually managed to convince ourselves that it was a joke, played by the neighbours. Or perhaps my partner had dropped it in the middle of the night and hadn't actually thrown it away 
in a sleep-addled state. Deep down, we both knew that these explanations weren't true, but we clung on to the shred of rationality they offered. We reopened the front door and carefully, my partner picked it up and we walked out with it, throwing it in a dumpster across the street. For the rest of the day, we tried to put it out of our minds. When we headed back that night, the arm was nowhere to be found and we breathed a sigh of relief. We went about our business, believing the whole saga to be over and went to bed a little past midnight after plenty of wine. I never sleep well when I've had wine and I tend to wake up at different times throughout the night. But for that, I am now deeply grateful because when I woke up last night, I saw the rubber arm at the foot of the bed, trying to pull both itself and the knife it was holding onto the bed. I screamed, a shrill ring of horror, and my partner startled awake. He took one look at my horrified expression, looked down at the arm, and sprang into action. The arm had stabbed the knife into the edge of the bed and was trying to use its grip on the knife to maneuver itself onto the bed. My partner grabbed the arm and tugged forcefully until it released its grip on the knife. Holding it by the end, he held it as far from himself as possible. The rubber fingers pointed away from him and darted outside, yelling for me to bring a lighter and some oil. I hurriedly grabbed both from the kitchen and ran after him down the stairs. He found a dumpster. He placed the writhing arm on the floor stepped on it to secure it in place and poured oil all over the arm. He bent forward to set it on fire. Suddenly, my arm felt glazed over with oil. I could feel the lighter coming closer toward my skin and I gasped in pain. He looked at me, pausing with the lighter near the rubber arm. I told him about how I could feel it, the oil and the heat from the flame. He froze, eyes wide with uncertainty and fear. He shut the flame from the lighter off and picked up the arm. I immediately stopped feeling the sensations of the rubber arm. We were at a loss. Finally, we decided to bring the arm back up to our place. We placed it in our safe and locked it in. We just went out to get some heavy velvet drapes and we've covered the safe in them to tune out the sound of the arm banging against the safe door. I'm not sure what to do. I'm terrified that it will get out somehow or again link my mind to its sensations and do something painful to itself or something along those lines to make me open the safe. I don't know what it wanted. Perhaps it was trying to replace my real arm with itself when we caught it with the knife. Or perhaps it was trying to kill us both. I'm not sure. We've been researching online and considering hiring an exorcist, but at the same time, I'm not too sure if that's what is happening here. If anyone has any idea what is happening, or if you've any ideas what to do, please let us know.